Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast and a very, very happy new year to you all. Well, the festive season in general was characterised by unsettled, very wet and at times stormy weather. Also, it was generally mild. So, are there any signs for change as we head through the first half of January? Well, in a word, the answer is yes. But without further ado, I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 2nd. And it's a very unsettled looking picture to start off with. Storm Henk, which has been named just before I started recording this, is pulling away eastwards. But there are further showers and longer spells of rain on the way in the short term as I run this sequence, with the Atlantic staying very much in charge. But as we go towards the weekend, change begins to take place because high pressure is building to the west and cold air is beginning to be uh, feed down from the northeast ahead of it. You can see some white shading there in northeastern Britain, indicating the possibility of sleet or snow showers as we go through Saturday. And running this through to its conclusion, high pressure becomes dominant. It's centered here just to the north of the UK with cold easterly winds there on its southern flank, and it doesn't really move a great deal through the first half of next week. So a change to much more settled conditions looks likely, if this is correct, also colder ones. Here's the upper air temperature and jet stream sequence. Jet stream there to begin with to the south of the UK. And what we see for a time is colder air being pulled in from the east to the northeast, but then high pressure becomes dominant, as I said, towards the end of the first week. Upper air temperatures are actually recovering by this point. The blues have been replaced with greens, but it will probably be staying cold down at the surface under calm and dry conditions. So let's have a look at some of the temperature forecasts associated with that GFS model run. To begin with, 15 GMT on Wednesday maximums, still double figures in southern England, colder as you head northwards. Going forwards to Friday and temperatures are beginning to dip by this point, close to the average really, sevens there in the south, a few degrees lower in the north. But the risk of frost will be increasing as well as high pressure builds in from the west. Forecast minimums here on Sunday morning, indicating temperatures close to or below freezing point in much of the UK, a widespread frost. And that could well become one of the themes as we head towards the end of the first week and through the second, but I'll look at that in a moment. Forecast maximums here on Monday afternoon. By this point, it's cold. I'd, I think I'd call it cold rather than a very cold daytime. Maximums around four Celsius in the south, two or three there in the north. But a big change with what we've had for much of December and the start, at least for the first couple of days of 2024. Here's the Margrep's G temperature plot for London. Each line represents one of the uh, runs within the ensemble model, and they are showing uh, maximum temperatures through this period. So going forwards through the first week of January, really, and into the second, the trend is clearly downwards. It's a very mild start there, maybe 12s, 13s, 14s in the London area, but there's a steady and consistent dip which takes place thereafter. So a change to colder conditions is being strongly signalled. Rainfall, with that unsettled start, the aggregates for days 0 to 5 are showing significant totals really across the UK. The distribution somewhat uncertain. There are some differences there between the ECM model on the left and GFS on the right, but all parts of the country can expect to see some rain. Now, I'll move forwards to the 0 to 10 day charts. There we go. I'm not sure if you noticed it because there is virtually no difference. If I just flip back to 0 to 5, go forwards to 0 to 10 again, the changes there are generally minuscule, which suggests that most of the rain is going to be falling in the 0 to 5 day period. Much more settled conditions being signaled by the ECM and GFS deterministic models in the 5 to 10 day period. So high pressure looks like becoming dominant if this precipitation projection is correct. So do the deterministic models in general support that trend? Here's the GFS Tuesday, the 9th of January. High pressure here, centered across the northern half of the UK and maybe just to the north. 
The uh, Canadian model at the same point makes more of an easterly flow into the southeast, so a greater chance there of sleet or snow showers. The German icon also has some differences, the high pressure centered a little bit further northeast, more of a southeasterly flow. The uh, ECM, the European model, high pressure in a similar position, maybe a few wintry showers there into the southeast, but it's a settled pattern which has been shown by all of these really. Finally, the UK Met Office global model, ditto, just maybe a chance of a few wintry showers in the southeast, but a good deal of dry weather towards the end of the first week, being, being signposted clearly by all the deterministic models. Nighttime frost probably becoming widespread as I've been saying. There's always some uncertainty about cloud amounts, which will, would of course hold up temperatures if, if it stays overcast. But at the moment, the signal is for frost to become widespread. That's going to be a big change with what we saw uh, through December, with parts of the UK really seeing virtually no air frost apart from maybe during the first few days of the month. So, how are things shaping up as we head into and through the second week? Of course, at this range, it's just about the general direction of travel, the trends and probabilities. Here's the 16-day GEFS ensemble uh, plot for London. Upper air temperatures across the top, precipitation along the bottom. And the thing to note here is that initially, virtually all the runs there are below the thick black line, the 30 average, but there's an upwards trend through the first few days, and I think that's really been, is connected to high pressure staying close to the UK and that initial cold air being mixed out. But temperatures at the surface may stay low. I'll come back to that in a second as well. Later on though, the trend is very much downwards for thick purple line, the ensemble mean, dropping several degrees at least below the 30 year average. So cold upper air to begin with, then somewhat milder, then colder again. In terms of precipitation, not many spikes there along the bottom. And the other thing, of course, to start paying more attention to now is the snow row. The maximum value it can take is 33. Through the second week, it starts off very low, but later on, as that colder air filters back in, it starts to increase and reaches 10. So around, well, just under 30% chance of snow falling in the London area. So low to moderate at this stage. Here are the two meter temperatures for London. And as I suggested, even though, temp even though the air aloft will be warming up, it will probably be staying cold down at the surface due to the influence of high pressure. The dark green indicates that. Those are runs going for maximums between 1 and 5 Celsius during the day. The overnight lows here, plenty of blue showing up. Those would produce air frosts because temperatures are dipping below 0 Celsius. Also, quite a lot of the greens would give ground frost, just maybe one or two uh, Celsius above freezing point. And later on, the amount of blue there during the days increases, and that suggests the chance at least, that's all it is, of it turning very cold. So through the second half of the second week, there is that possibility of it turning very cold, and likewise, the risk of snow would possibly be increasing. Manchester, it's a similar story, very similar in both upper air temperatures and precipitation. Here are the two meter temperatures for uh, Manchester. Again, similar trends to the ones for London. Up to Glasgow, and not a great deal of difference here really either. You can see the cold airs mixed out through the first few days, but then most of the runs in the ensemble bring it back. In fact, there are a few runs which are going extremely cold indeed, just dipping close to minus 15 Celsius. Remember, these values are at about 1500 meters above sea level. The snow row values a little bit higher, not particularly high though here. So it, it's quite uncertain where the snow risk would be greatest, probably in the north and the east with the type of pattern which has been signaled. But it's far too early to uh, be worrying about the details. Here are the two meter temperatures for Glasgow, widespread frosts and daytime temperatures staying low through the second week. The ECM rainfall probability charts are interesting because usually they show the wettest conditions in the west of UK with the weather coming in from the Atlantic, but here for days 
Um, eight and nine, the first two of the second week, basically, the chance of five millimetres or more of rain falling anywhere in the United Kingdom is unusually low. It's, at this range, generally, the ensemble spread widens, so to see the probability between about 0 and 10% in most of the UK is unusual. By day 10, so day three of the second week, the probability has increased significantly in northern Scotland and in the northeast and northwest. And just moving forwards to the 11, 12 and 13 day charts, the chance of significant amounts of rain or snow remains low, although of course, Snow, five millimetres of rain translated into snow is a significant amount, so it's not quite the same thing, but the general precipitation amounts here are relatively low. But also notice that the green shading is mostly in the north and the east. And it could be, it's just a possibility, it could be that high pressure will be building up towards Greenland, low pressure areas moving down and having more of an impact across the north and the east of the United Kingdom, perhaps where, where the greatest chance of sleet and snow becoming more persistent through this period is. But far too early as I've been saying to worry about the details. Here is the 10-day GEFS mean surface level pressure plot, so Friday the 12th of January, averaging out all of the individual runs, a very strong signal for high pressure to be continuing to influence things across the UK. Some signs there that it will be starting to build northwest towards Greenland, a classic pattern for cold spells in the UK, Western Europe were that to develop. The mean surface level pressure uh, data table for York the oranges there and the reds for the first few days showing pressure well above the average. There is a downwards trend through the second week, but still lots of yellow, lots of orange. Once more, that could be a sign that pressure is going to be building west and northwest, as I said, towards Greenland. So that would be good news for cold weather fans. There is, of course, a chance, as always, that the high pressure system will just decline southwards into continental Europe. Were that to happen, we'd end up with a much milder pattern eventually, winds coming back in from the southwest. But at the time of filming this, that looks like a less likely scenario. So to summarize, week one, it's unsettled and mild early on, but the trend is for colder and drier conditions to develop. There is a chance of wintry showers in the east and the southeast. Week two, often dry and cold, high pressure dominating things through the first few days. So although upper air temperatures may be quite close to the average, down at the surface, it will probably be staying cold and frosty. Later on, if high pressure migrates northwards, northwestwards up towards Greenland, where some of the computer models are suggesting, the risk of snow would start to increase and it could, it could become very cold. So there we have it. After a very unsettled, often stormy and mild December, a big change is on the way, so it seems. High pressure building close to the UK will bring more settled conditions, temperatures take a dip and the risk of frost becomes more widespread. And then as we head towards the middle of the month, details of course become very uncertain, but there are signs of high pressure migrating towards Greenland. If that happens, the risk of snow and very cold conditions would begin to rise. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, if you did, then please consider hitting the like button. Also, subscribe into the channel if you haven't done so already. Finally, remember that you can keep up to date with the day-to-day -day developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye. <laughs>